Hi everyone, this is Dr. Madhuri from Team MDS Conquer. So, in this video, I am going to discuss about the embryology part of the tongue and also the anatomy of the tongue. As all of us know, that first impression will be the best impression. To good score in the examination, you have to start your answers with the contents. Okay, and this content should include the interaction, starting from the interaction part to the references which are given in the last of your answer. So going into the subject now, as of all, all of us know, the tongue is a muscular organ which is situated in the floor of the mouth. And in the Latin, it is it means it is lingua, whereas in Greek, it means the tongue means the glossa. So coming to the development of the tongue, this development of the tongue starts from the fourth to eighth week of intrauterine life. And this development can be summarized into two stages. Whereas in the first stage, you can see here all the two sides of pharyngeal arches will combine in the midline to form the floor of the primitive pharynx. So this is the stage one. Whereas if you take the stage two here, you can see the two swellings. Those are called as the lingual swellings and their structure called as the tuberculum impar. So, these three structures are formed in relation to the first arch and there is an another structure called as a hypobranchial eminence which is formed in relation to the medial parts of the third arch and the fourth arch and you can see here that the fifth arch has been disappeared. So, these two stages are the important stages for the formation of the tongue. This whole slide represents the origin of the tongue here. So, these are the two swellings that is they are called as a lingual swellings and these two swellings are developed from the medial most part of the mandibular arches and this medial most part of the mandibular arch they will proliferate and give rise to this lingual swellings and there is an another structure called as a tuberculum impar. This tubercular impar will separate these two lingual swellings and you can see here one more depression is present behind this or below the tuberculum impar this is nothing but the epithelium which will proliferate and first form the thyroglossal duct and this thyroglossal duct will form into a depression called as a foramen cecum and this foramen cecum or the, the thyroglossal duct gives rise to the thyroid gland and if you take the other two swellings which are present in the medial part they are called as cranial part and caudal part of the hypobranchial eminence. And this hypobranchial eminence has these two parts, right? Cranial part and caudal part. From this caudal part, epiglottis is developed. Whereas the cranial part is involved in the formation of the tongue. So actually this, uh, for the development, this tongue is grouped into three parts. That is anterior to that of the tongue posterior one third of the tongue and the posterior most of the tongue. So, we, are, we will study the development of the tongue in these three parts. If you take the anterior two third of the tongue, it is developed from the fusion of two tuber lingual swellings and one the tuberculum impar. So, these three will fuse and form the anterior two third of the tongue. Whereas, if you take the posterior one third of the tongue, it is developed from the cranial part of the hypobranchial eminence and if you take the posterior most part of the tongue it is developed from the fourth arch so this anterior two third is developed from the mandibular arch whereas posterior one third of the tongue is developed from the third arch this is first arch whereas posterior most is developed from the fourth arch so here the second arch is missing right so this second arch you can see in this picture this second arch is buried under the third arch hence it is not involved in the formation of the tongue only the first arch where anterior two third third arch posterior one third and the fourth arch posterior most part of the tongue is formed and remember one thing in representing the answer should be in the diagrammatic way or the flow chart way so that it will fetch you more marks in the exam so this table is the summary of the components so, you can see here, this all the summary where it is first arch from the anterior to the third arch 
posterior one third and fourth arch posterior most and occipital myotomes gives rise to the muscle and these are the nerve supply we will go we will see in the next slides. Coming to the anatomy of the tongue, this tongue actually has the three parts okay uh, that is root body and tip whereas two surfaces that is dorsal surface and the ventral surface if you take the ventral surface it is confined only to the oral cavity whereas this dorsal surface will have the oral cavity part that is called as oral part and the other part is called as a pharyngeal part so in this diagram you can see this root of the tongue it this is the root of the tongue which is attached to the mandible and the hyoid bone so this tongue is attached to the mandible and the hyoid bone and the superior surface that is anterior two thirds of the tongue you can see here it is in a horizontal direction whereas the posterior part or the posterior one third or the pharyngeal part is oriented in a vertical plane see this is a it is oriented in a vertical plane and there is a structure called as sulcus terminalis which is present or which it will separate the pharyngeal part from the basal i mean pharyngeal part and the oral part and there is an other structure called as foramen cecum where you can see here it is the uh, i mean it will present at the apex of the sulcus terminalis coming to the histology part this histology part will be of like dealing with all the papillae of the tongue So papillae of the tongue, if you take there are four types of papilla, filiform, fungiform, valate and the foliate papilla. For us, uh, the papilla you have to write in headings like uh, shape of the papilla. First you have to write shape of the papilla, location of the papilla and whether the taste buds present or absent. So if you take the shape of this filiform papillae, it is like conical shape and the location mostly they are scattered over all over the tongue and taste buds are absent in this filiform papillae whereas if you take the fungiform papillae it is a dome shaped or a mushroom shaped taste buds are present and here this fungiform papillae mostly it present at the i mean at the apex of the tongue then you take the foliate papillae or sorry valid papillae this valid papillae are also blunt cylindrical shaped and this are present in front of this sulcus terminalis or the foramen cecum and taste buds are present in this phallic papillae and last is the foliate papillae and this foliate papillae will present in the linear fold like structures which are present at in front of the palatoglossal this is the palatoglossal arch they are present in front of this palatoglossal arch on the sides of the tongue so these are the papillae of the tongue coming to the muscles of the tongue so this muscles of the tongue can be dealt with two things, two types. That is, there are uh, intrinsic muscles of the tongue and also the extrinsic muscles of the tongue. And if the any muscle for any muscle, you have to write the insertion of the muscle, origin of the muscle, and the function of the muscle. You have to group your answer into these three headings. So if you take the intrinsic muscles, they are superior longitudinal, inferior longitudinal, transverse muscles, and the vertical muscles. Coming to the superior longitudinal muscle, this is the superior, this is the superior longitudinal muscle where this is from the origin is from the back of the tongue and if you take the insertion of the tongue, it will insert into the margins of the tongue. Okay, then function is the, it shortens the tongue and it also curls the apex and sides of the tongue. Then coming to the inferior longitudinal muscle. This inferior longitudinal muscle is origin originates from the root of the tongue and also from the some part from the hyoid bone. And if you take the function, it will shorten the tongue. It is uncurls the apex. Whereas if you take the superior longitudinal, it will curls. Whereas it uncurls. Inferior longitudinal will uncurls the apex of the tongue. Coming to the transverse muscle, this transverse muscle, if you take it is originated from the medium septum this is the medium septum of the tongue and it inserts into the lateral margins these are the lateral margins okay these inserts into the lateral margins of the tongue function is it narrows and elongates the tongue 
coming to the vertical muscle this vertical muscle it is originate from the dorsum of the tongue and insertion into the ventral part of the tongue this is the ventral part and function is it will flatten the tongue and also widen the tongue so those are the intrinsic muscles coming to the extrinsic muscles of the tongue these are like genioglossus hyoglossus styloglossus and palatoglossus and these are the functions of the extrinsic muscles that is protrudes the tongue retracts the tongue depresses the tongue and also elevates the tongue so coming to the genioglossus this genioglossus this is this is the genioglossus muscle it will originate in the superior mental spine and inserts into the body of the hyoid bone but if you take the function it will help in the protrude of the tongue that is anterior part and depresses the central part of the tongue so though it helps in both protrusion and the depression then coming to the hypoglossus muscle this hypoglossus muscle will originate from the greater horns of the hyoid bone and again it inserts into the lateral surface this is the lateral surfaces of the tongue and function is it will depresses the tongue then styloglossus styloglossus muscle will originate from the styloid process and again it inserts into the lateral parts of the tongue it will elevates and retracts the tongue and it can pull the pull back the tongue superiorly also coming to the palatoglossus muscle this palatoglossus muscle origins from the here this is palatum aponeuroses whereas again it inserts into the lateral parts of the tongue remember all these muscles of the tongue are paired muscles that is two one pair all these muscles are paired and the function is it will elevate the tongue and depresses the soft palate coming to the vascular supply of the tongue it can be by these arteries that is lingual artery you can see this lingual artery is the main artery which is divided into the dorsal lingual arteries which will supply to the dorsal part of the tongue and also the sublingual artery which will supply in the lingual part and also the submandibular gland and also a deep lingual artery can be seen which will seen at the base of the tongue and the tip of the tongue so lingual artery sublingual arteries dorsal lingual arteries sublingual arteries and deep lingual arteries can supply the tongue if you take the veins there is a dorsal lingual vein which drains from the dorsum and also the sides of the tongue whereas deep lingual veins will drain the tip of the tongue and join the sublingual veins from the sublingual salivary gland whereas all these veins will terminate finally into the internal jugular vein so this is the venous drainage of the tongue then if you see the lymphatic drainage anterior part of the tongue or the tip of the tongue into the submental lymph nodes anterior two thirds of the tongue into the submandibular lymph nodes posterior one third of the tongue into the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes and the posterior most part of the tongue into the superior deep cervical lymph nodes and remember this lymphatic drainage is very important because even in carcinoma of the tongue even the contralateral lymph nodes can also be palpable if it is affected on the right side then even the left side lymph node disc can also be palpable in this uh, in this lymphatic drainage of the tongue so this is the nerve supply of the tongue which is given on a table so the taste anterior two third with the corda tympani posterior one third glossopharyngeal and posterior most is vagus if you take the sensory part it is lingual part of uh, trigeminal nerve then posterior one third is the glossopharyngeal nerve and posterior most part of the tongue will be the vagus nerve and motor thing is with this is very important remember all extrinsic and intrinsic muscle except the palatoglossus muscle can be supplied by the hypoglossal nerve whereas this palatoglossal is supplied by the cranial root of the accessory nerve so this is the thing regarding nerve supply so coming to the applied aspects remember any answer which you are going to answer in the basic part should end with the applied aspect which is important in the pg examination so all this anatomy or a embryology or a physiology or a biochemistry or a histology or anything any subject basic subject should end with the applied aspects so here i have mentioned few applied aspect first you can write first you can write how to 
you examination of the tongue then you can mention few tongue disorders and you can mention what will happen if there is injury to the hypoglossal law you can write there will be a paralysis of the tongue and the tongue is deviated toward paralysis site and the paralysis of the genoglossal muscle which will lead to the abstraction of the airway and why we will give few drugs in the sublingual uh, way right so why these uh, drugs are important in the sublingual way because they will have a a uh, more faster way of penetration because of this all this lingual vascular vascularity and you can write about the referred pain and the pain which is referred from the tongue or from the other parts and you can include the tongue in the taste pathway also because of this taste buds and you can write few special investigation procedures like how the tongue is investigated you can write you can mention the radiological procedures like mri ultrasound or uh, ct and you can also mention few other in special investigations like cinematography and cine radiographic st uh, studies and also the electromyography study because as a tongue is a muscle where it can be studied by the electromyography also so you can include few applied aspects at the end of your answer which will which will increase your score so at the end you have to mention the references that that is starting with the basic references like your textbooks and you can include a one uh, important article which is you which you have been used in your uh, this thing applied aspects or anything you can include the one reference one article at the end and but yeah, mention uh, all these important thing is you have to include all the basic textbooks like anatomy embryology part and medicine part and the la last thing is you have to include one important article which you have been used so thank you everyone this is the important notes or something about the tongue and important tips where you can fetch incre which will increase your the score in your examination thank you everyone uh, stay happy and learn learning with mds conquer